Good morning. So, one million views. So one of my videos has finally made it to a million views. Um, I've been at this for quite a long time. I think about nearly 300 videos now. And um, one of my recent videos has gone and just popped off and made it to a million views. So how did that happen? Um, oh, I wish I knew and I'd really love to tell you the story about it. And um, I'd really love to give you tips and let everyone know, hey, just do this and you'll fool, fool the uh, YouTube algorithm. But it's really not that simple. And if I knew how it happened, I'd be doing it every single time. And it's not um, that simple. But let me start from the beginning and I'll tell you how I ended up getting into YouTube in the first place. Uh, meanwhile, by the way, I've got baits out this side and a bait out that side. And I'm just sort of fishing the sunrise. The sun's just sort of coming up now. You can see it pink on the horizon over there. Uh, plan is to try to catch myself some dinner for tonight, so I'll, I'll just fish as I sort of talk. So, uh, it was quite some time ago now, maybe six or seven years ago, maybe a little bit longer actually, probably closer to 10 years ago. I had a bit of an, uh, an incident down on the beach one day um, involving some dead people and um, pretty unpleasant incident. I was in kind of a bit of a funny sort of space after that. Probably should have gone and spoken to someone, got a bit of counselling. Um, never really did just sort of internalized it i was in a bit of a weird place um i was at went to work i was being a bit of a smart ass i'm not gonna lie and um sent an inappropriate message to someone at work got intercepted um it all blew up basically out of embarrassment i just quit and left my job um i was really upset it was a job that i loved i did something really stupid some childish ended up leaving that job and going to another job that I wasn't really enjoying as much went through a bit of a period of maybe two years where I was just in a really bad place mentally um, just kept beating myself up uh, I was beating myself up because I, I sort of left my job over something really stupid and really childish I should never have done it but you know I just couldn't let go of it beat myself up for about two years I was in a really dark place was but, but what I was doing was every afternoon I was going to the beach because I found the beach was um, where I felt my best, where I felt the happiest. So I was fishing, I was paddling my kayak, I was taking out the boat if the weather would let me. I was just smashing it every afternoon. I tried my hardest to go to the beach um, because that was what made me happy and is where I felt the best. So um, all day long I'd spend my day at work um, pretty much miserable but I always knew in the back of my mind that I'd be going to the beach in the afternoon, I'd be going to the sea. So um, that's what sort of got me through was going to the sea. But meanwhile, as I'm going and I'm fishing lots and I'm paddling my kayak and I'm taking a lot of photos and my phone just loaded up with photographs and I didn't know what to do with them all. So I said to my son Lee at the time, Lee, um, I really need to get all these photos off my phone. I'm not very tech savvy. So I said, mate, I need you to get these photos off my phone and put them on a disc or something so I can clear it out and get some more, oh, fish on. So Lee says to me, dad, you're an idiot. He goes, you got all these really cool photos. People would love to see this sort of stuff. Oh, oh a little snapper on here, I think. People would love to see this sort of stuff. Why don't you start an Instagram page and start posting this sort of stuff? And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want Instagram. He goes, no, no, just do it. So we started an Instagram page, started posting some fishing photos and whatnot. And it sort of grew from there a little bit. And um, I've always been a really average fisherman, I'm not going to lie. I've always been a terrible fisherman. Um, all my friends will tell you. Oh, I'm in over here now as well. I've got double hookups. This one's only small. Grab this guy without getting spiked, that'll be nice. So I've always been a terrible fisherman. Nice little snapper, but he's undersized, he can go back. I'm gonna leave this one in for now. Let's see what's going on here. But I found that the more I was going, um, the more I was catching, and I just found that by going more often, obviously increased your odds. There's nothing here. Going more often increased my odds and I was starting to catch fish, which I'd never really done in the past. So I kept going, kept posting photos. Um, in the meantime, I'd sort of found a better job and um, sort of started talking myself out of this little um, bit of a funk that I was in. I, I was in a really good spot. I, had, I was in a really, um, got a really good family. I had a half, I changed jobs. I got a decent sort of jo a job that I liked a bit better and um, 
you know, I live in a magic place. I had time to myself. I was doing what I loved as much as possible. And I sort of um, pulled myself out of the, the depressed state that I was in and just sort of started fishing. Anyway, oh, this is quite a long story. <laughs> so what happened is I was writing a, a, uh, an article for a fishing magazine, trying to write an article for a fishing magazine, but all of my fishing was done sort of at this time of the morning or late in the afternoon when the light is really hard. And anyone that knows anything about photos knows that taking photos in the in low light situations you need um, long exposure and um, long exposure in a boat that's moving like this is really hard to do because you just get blurry photos or just washed out photos and it wasn't really working for me so my son lee was about 14 at the time started to show a bit of an interest in the photography he bought himself a, a big Canon SLR camera and he says, Dad, I'll come out and take the photos for you so you can get this magazine article up and going. I said, all right, cool. So he came out, started taking photos. Once more, I'm posting on Facebook, I'm posting on Instagram. Um, I got the, I ended up, uh, I ended up actually never getting the article up in the magazine. I got the photos I needed, but I never actually put the article up. Um, but what I what happened it was it was my birthday and because Lee was working he was making a little bit of money he bought me a GoPro for my birthday one one year um, obviously my wife chipped in a bit as well and helped out he bought me a GoPro and he goes Dad now you can film your fishing I said all right whatever so I was filming my fishing um, basically just going fishing catching putting a bit of music behind it and posting it on YouTube and um, Lee says to me Dad you really need to talk on these videos and and start telling people what you're doing people want to know what you're doing and this is how YouTube works and blah 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 and I'm like mate I don't really think that's me and I don't really want to do it but at the time he was getting into photography getting into filming I thought look if it helps you out and I get to spend time with you so he was coming out in the boat with me and I spent a lot of time with him and um, I'm like, if it helps you out and it gets you, um, you know, moving forwards on your own and I'm um, doing something you love, then I'm happy to oblige. So I started filming. He started filming me. I started talking on the videos. We sort of started building something together and YouTube, oh, and again, another hit. YouTube slowly but surely started to grow. Got a few sponsors on board. Captain Jacks was the very first people to um, approach me. They liked what we were doing, liked my family approach. Started supplying me with shirts and so forth, which I'm still ever grateful for now. Um, even now, uh, I think it's seven years on, Captain Jack's still behind me, still supplying me with clothes. And YouTube just sort of grew from there. Um, as it started to grow, we sort of monetized the channel, started to make a little bit of money. Um, when I'm taking a little bit of money, I'm not talking about thousands of dollars, I'm talking about $30, $70 here, you know, $50 there. But it was enough to buy a bit of petrol, it was enough to buy a bit of bait, so we carried it on. And um, it started to grow, and basically I was using as an example to my son, who was sort of trying to build his own photography business at the time. If I can do this, and I'm, you know, old and ugly, what can you do? So I started doing YouTube as more of a, um, just an example to my kids to say to them, look, just be passionate about what you do. Um, if you're passionate about what you do, things will come to you and people will um, believe you and people will get behind you because you're passionate. So that was the whole reason I carried on with YouTube. And um, as since then, uh, yeah, things have just gone from, you know, things have just sort of started to take on a life of their own. The videos start getting views, a little bit more money starts coming in, a little bit more money starts coming in. Um, again, I'm still not talking about thousands of dollars worth of money. I'm talking about enough to buy some fuel for the boat, to buy some, um, some bait, you know, so that was okay. And then suddenly, kaboom, I think it was about 250 odd videos in, and suddenly, kaboom, one of my videos actually grabbed some traction grabbed a bit of traction in America and bang, got a million views in the course of like a uh, maybe a two week period. Um, it's now sitting on I think 1.3 million views. And um, yeah, amazing, who would have thought? So then we did another one, sort of backed it up. If I'm honest, I, I was kind of disappointed that the video that did all the views was actually a land based one. It's not really what I do. Like as you guys know that watch me, I'm a boat fisherman and always have. I've just loved being out on boats and love being out on the sea. But it was actually a land based video that did it. Um, if you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link down below to the video that actually popped off. But we tried it again and we went to the same sort of spot, did the same sort of video, and that one got 900 odd thousand views as well, which was something. So um, it was obviously a formula that works, but um, the place where we were doing it was also very fickle, very hard to get to, um, very tide reliant too. It has to be the right tides to be able to do it. So it wasn't something I could repeat all the time. 
but we're carrying on we're still making videos i'm out here fishing um thanks to everyone who watches everyone who watches and the guys that get behind me you're paying for the fuel for this boat you help me get out here and do it more often so i'm going to stay at it anyway the plan today is to try to catch myself a fish so stop talking scott because i'm pretty sure you've done more than your fair share all right as i'm standing here chatting away i've noticed there's a few big marks on the sounder there's been a couple of archers sort of hanging on the bottom i've rigged up a snap bait it's just a little snap bait here i think it's a 40 grammer with a um fillet of whiting on here is it 40 gram yeah 40 grams it's got a fillet of whiting on here i'm just going to drop this over the side here and see if i can't pick up a tasty treat from the bottom that would be ideal all i really want is one fish for my dinner tonight Oh, yeah, good fish. Look at that. Oh, no, it's not really that good a fish. That got hammered straight away. Oh, there's something down there's biting it for sure. Is it on there or is it still just nibbling? It's not on there, it's just nibble, nibble, nibble. Come on. Yeah, there's a fish on. Let's go. All right, what's this? It's not huge, huge. It hit that snap bait as soon as it got to the bottom, but uh, it's just a little snappy, a little snappy Tom. There's a lot of these little guys at this ledge for some reason. Not so many of the bigger ones. A little snapper. I guess the message I just want to get out there is I know there's a lot of people doing it tough. Um, reach out to people. Honestly, it's so easy. You're not feeling right. You're feeling a bit down and you just kind of internalize it and you take it all inside and take it on yourself. Reach out. There's people out there. You've got mates. You've got family. People will listen. People will gather around you. If they know you're struggling, people will get around you. Um, you're not alone in all this. So if you're struggling, please reach out to someone. Reach out to me. I'm happy to have a chat. Um, just reach out. It's not, you're not here on your own. There's, there's, you know, there's a network that, and it's there. And if, if you haven't got a network around you, go find one. Go join a volunteer group. Go to a surf club. Go to the volunteer firefighters. All of these sort of places. They will get around you and they'll help you out and um, help you find the positives, help you be grateful for what you do have in your life and not so much whinging about what you don't have. I know, again, there's a lot of people in all different circumstances and, you know, it's really hard to generalise on the whole lot, but th at the end of the day, just reach out, talk to somebody. You know, a problem shared is a problem halved, so get out there, guys. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I've spoken enough and I'm just going to get on with my fishing now because really, I've got to get something for my dinner and it's not really happening at the moment. Let's go. Come on, eat, eat and be big. Okay. All right, fish on. This feels like a half decent fish. This could actually be the boy I came for. I've been fishing this ledge all morning and there's just been nothing but... Oh yeah, this could be the one I want. Nothing but small pink snapper all morning, just picking my baits one after the other. So I put on what was a... It was the head of a skiffy basically, onto my little snap bait here and dropped it down, hoping that the pickers wouldn't be able to get it quite so much. I think this is a dew fish. This could be exactly the fish I came for, and it is. Oh, I'm gonna leave my net. Net. There you go. Look where I am. Uh, anyone that doesn't think intro oh i'm in here too look 
Oh, what's this? Well, this could be another one. Anyone that doesn't think inshore jewfish are a thing, have a look where I am. Less than a mile out, sitting in 12 meters of water. What do we got here? Wow, it's just been absolutely dead all morning, except for small picky pick pickers. Just small pickers, and then suddenly, uh, it's another small picker, another little snappy. This little guy can go back. Oh, come on, settle, 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 settle. Settle, don't spike me. Okay, this little guy can go back. And have a look at this guy. Phew. Now that guy there, this guy here, couldn't be any better. Perfect eating size Jewfish. Look at that, he's got the little snap bait in his mouth there. Had a, like I said before, I had like the head off of Skippy there. Perfect eating size Jewfish. And you can see in the background how close to shore I am. I'm about a mile off the, off the coast, if that. So it just goes to show you, it is possible to catch inshore Jewfish. There's plenty of them around. You just gotta find the little, just find the bait. That's all it is. What a beautiful little fish. I'd rather eat one at this size any day of the week than eating the bigger ones. He is 65, he's 65 centimeters. Perfect eating size Jewfish. I'm stoked with that. You. All right. Well, that's the fish I came for. Um, stoked. I know it's been a bit of a weird episode today. I know I was talking a lot earlier on, but um, yeah, the whole YouTube thing, like I said, a million views. I'm absolutely stoked about it. Um, I'm not doing YouTube for any other reason but to try to inspire my sons and um, now I realise I can make a little bit of money and pay for my fuel and my bait. I'm stoked with that. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm actually kind of enjoying the process of making the videos and bringing it to you guys. I get a lot of positive feedback so that's really good. Um, don't forget guys, take it, take heed. It's a, I know it's a bit of a story and a bit long winded but everyone goes through their days where they feel down and um, you know not themselves. Reach out to people, talk to people. Um, you're not alone out there. I know times are tough for a lot of people out there at the moment, but you can find positives if you look for it. Um, just reach out and chat to people. Anyway, I'm going to call this video here. Um, I'm going to call this the end of the video. I've got the fish I came for. I only need one fish. That's more than enough for me. I'm out of here. See you guys all in the next episode, and hopefully I'll be back to my normal episodes and um, not talking as much as I did in this one. Thanks for watching anyway. You.